folks, Mark Rigsby with NBR Photo coming at you today because I am doing a review of the Canon RF 50mm f1.8, the nifty 50. Now, before I get into that, analytics tells me that the majority of you are not subscribed. So go over there and click that subscribe button, then click that bell button to be notified anytime I upload new content. And please remember that anything that I use in this video, whether it's the camera I'm recording with or the lens I'm reviewing, will have a link down below. So see if that's something you might be interested in. Now let's talk about the Nifty 50, the Canon 50 millimeter F1.8. If you shot Canon for a while, you know for a fact that they've always had one of those in their lens lineups, whether it be film, EF mount, RF mount, they've always had it. I mean, if you've had the EF mount, you know they had like tons of versions of the 50 millimeter. They had the 50 millimeter 2.0, the 50 millimeter 1.8, the 1.4, the 1.2, they even had a 1.0. I have that up on my shelf right now. Um, I'll do a review on that sometime. It's an interesting, interesting lens. But currently in the RF lens lineup, they only have two. They have the 1.8 and the 51.2. When it comes to these lenses, there's tons of videos out there that's going to talk about all the tech specs on it, how many elements, how many, how sharp it is at the corners and stuff like that. I, honestly, I'm a photographer, not a tester. I don't care about that stuff. I care about how this allows me to give my cr clients the best possible um, product and allow me to create the art that I want to create. The things that I'm really interested in is the cost usability, functionality, image quality, and how this lens allows me to provide my clients with the best possible product I can. So when it comes to corner sharpness or whatever, I've never had a client look at me and say, you know what, I don't want this image because the corners aren't sharp. They don't look at that. I mean, it's just not what happens. And when I'm doing an advertising shoot, they don't care about that stuff. Um, so what we're gonna do is talk first about cost. This thing is $199 plus tax, so it's a good, it's a little skip over $200, which is not much at all when it comes to the RF lens mount system. If you think about it, when they first released the, L, the RF mount system, everything was an L lens, and everything was $2,000 or more. This thing is $200. And if you compare that to the EF version, that is a $100 lens, the EF version with the metal mount is 120. I think the all plastic one used to be 80 bucks. And then you put an adapter on that, it's right up on this price. You can throw the EF on adapter and it's fine. The EF to RF adapter is magnificent. It works just fantastic. I mean, we've all brought that our EF lenses over. So having that adapter is fantastic, but it's 100 bucks. And combine that with the EF50 and you literally have the same price as this. So why not get yourself a, a native mount? Um, now, when I talk about usability, I talk about build quality and comfort in hand, okay? And that's what usability is to me. It, it's, functionality is a completely different thing, but usability is about how it feels in the hand. If you have a junk lens, you're not gonna wanna shoot with it. I have a shelf full of junk lenses over there that I do not use because they are not comfortable or fun to use and their image quality sucks. Plus, no one will buy them because no one wants the junk lenses. So I'm stuck with them forever. They're going up to the attic. Screw it. But this, for $200, is a quality built lens. Take a look at this. It is solid plastic with a matte finish. The matte finish is fantastic. I love what they're doing with the RF series. The matte finish is beautiful. And also, it feels good in the hand which is good because you know those gloss lenses that you have in, in the past, they just feel greasy and slippery after a while. And I work in Houston, Texas a lot because it's my hometown and it's hot here. And if I'm working outside, my hands get sweaty and things slip around and it's just not comfortable and good to play with. I haven't had that problem with this at all. It's also got the metal mount. The original EF lens was all plastic. The metal mount is fantastic. And what that also does is gives it a little bit more heft and it feels better on the camera than an all plastic lens does. And that's just how it is. It makes it feel better in the hand. As you can see, it's a small little lens. It doesn't feel bulky, it doesn't feel heavy, but it does have heft. If you're a street photographer and you need some incognito lens, this thing is fantastic. And a 50 millimeter is a great focal length for that. But if you need something small, something unobtrusive, this is the way to go. And that's it. It's very comfortable in the hands. It feels good. It feels like you're holding a quality piece of equipment, which makes you want to use it. 
and that's the usability. Now the functionality, this thing has a lot going for it. Now, when they released all the RF lenses, they came out with a control ring. And that is a programmable ring on the front that you can change things to. I usually set my ISO to it. This one only has one ring, but which ring is it? Actually, it's both. If you look on the side here, it has a switch that goes between control and focus. And that allows you to decide which one. If you're using autofocus on this, there's no use in having it on there. Just put it on control ring and use that for your ISO or whatever you've got to set to. That's the way to go on that. Autofocus is nice and snappy, even in low light. If you're shooting an event or something like that, do not worry about this. Combine that with the R6 or the R5, Oh, dude, you're nailing stuff like that. It's like magic. It's fantastic. The autofocus distance is a little bit better than the EF version. The EF version was just a little over, what, a foot? And I think this is a little bit under a foot, so you got yourself a closer focus distance. Image quality on this lens is fantastic. For a $200 lens, you're not gonna beat the image quality on this lens. It is sharp. It is nice. It's contrasty. It doesn't have very many weaknesses on the image front. I am very happy. All the images I shot before this that I showed in the beginning are fantastic. It really is good. I mean, I'm super happy with it. And so, you know, I'm gonna throw a couple of images at the end that you guys can take a look at and see exactly how it feels. The book on this thing is, it's a 1.8 aperture, which is a fast lens. That's the key there. Being a 1.8 aperture lens means that it's super fast. Low light focusing and low light imagery is very good. You can bring highlights up in this. Um, this lens does not have image stabilization, but when you put it on the R6 or R5, you do have that five point in body stabilization from those two cameras, so you are good to go on that front. But overall, this thing right here is by far the best bang for your buck on the RF system you can think of. Doesn't matter if you're expert, professional, whatever, or beginner. If you have an RF mount camera, you need this in your bag. Even though I've got the 50L on its way, I'm still gonna keep this, because there will be times that I'll need a smaller lens and I will go straight to this, and I will have no worries about whether or not I will be able to get the shots that I want with this. Anyway, that's about it. I'm Mark Rigsby with MDR Photo. If you liked the video, click like. If you love the video, click subscribe. If you didn't like the video, heck, click subscribe anyway. Who knows, the, maybe the next video will be one that you enjoy. Do not forget to click subscribe, um, and then click that bell button, and so you're notified anytime I upload new content, and I'll see you here next time on MDR Photo. Talk to you later, bye.